with the average restaurant meal in Norway costing upwards of $30. We thought we'd try the top rated cheap eats to see if you can still enjoy dining in Norway on a budget. We're in Oslo, where we'll be tasting our way through the city, trying both traditional Norwegian food and international cuisine. The first place that we've gone for today is a noodle place called Tunko, which was rated as number one on TripAdvisor and Google for cheap eats. And they also had a really nice ethos, which we can really get behind. Responsible farming, seasonal products, locally sourced products, eco-friendly packaging and eating less meat. So it was definitely somewhere that we wanted to try out. We had a couple of different options. We had some Japanese style, some Thai style and some Vietnamese style. Or there was a third option, a fourth option actually, which was surprise me and you don't know what you're gonna get. So I've gone for the Japanese one, but Craig has actually gone for the surprise me option. So we have no idea what he's actually got. I went for the vegetarian option. So I've got carrots, cabbage, green beans, broccoli and tempeh with of course noodles. And then it's in a teriyaki sauce. And then I've got all the same veg that Claire's got. I've also got tofu and a little bit of chicken in here. Teriyaki sauce is not too overpowering. Everything's really well cooked. I'd say the sauce is a little bit fruity, not sure exactly what it is. I'm about to try Craig's one and see if I can guess what it is. It's a little bit spicy, but it's not really spicy, not overwhelmingly so. So I guess it's a medium level and maybe something slightly peanutty in it, but I'm not entirely sure apart from that. It's quite nice, I'm enjoying it. There was a good amount of vegetables. The sauce wasn't too overpowering, but also there was enough of it that you could taste it. And the tempeh was well cooked and they actually gave a generous amount of it as well, which isn't always the case when you go to places like this. So all in all, it was pretty good. It wasn't the best noodles I've ever had, but then, you know, considering the price, the fact that it's takeout, it was a good option, I think. So this morning we've come down to a place called Harold's Waffle for breakfast and they do traditional Norwegian waffles here which are different from the Belgian waffles they're a lot thinner and they're actually heart shaped which is a bit unusual and on top of our waffle we've got some brown cheese which is also very traditional here and it turns brown apparently from the caramelizing of the sugar during the process of making the cheese which is quite cool and we've also got some whipped cream because whipped cream goes great with waffles. So this is the brown cheese? So let's try some of the cheese alone first. It's like very sweet for a cheese, which is really unusual. Normally it's quite a savory taste. It's like sort of a caramel mix of cheese. It's really odd, odd texture, but it's actually quite nice. Waffle seems to be slightly cinnamony. Definitely a lot softer than a Belgian waffle and a bit less sweet. It's, it's quite nice actually. In order to work up our appetites for lunch, we headed down to explore the waterfront area. We took in the view of the Oslo Ford from the top of the Opera House and wandered around the historic Akershus Fortress before we were ready to try some traditional Norwegian food at a place called Sophie's. And this was the number one rated place that was affordable for traditional food, so we went for that one. Now when I say affordable, I mean it was less than £20 for a meal because here in Oslo that's kind of considered cheap for a sit-down meal even though it's not what we would normally consider cheap. We had some traditional food, so we got some Norwegian meatballs with cabbage and potatoes in like a gravy sauce and also some lamb with cabbage and potatoes in a like onion gravy. Craig really liked the lamb, didn't you? Oh yeah, it was really good. It was really soft, it just fell right off the bone and the cabbage really, really well cooked and it just all tasted really good together. We both had a very much home-cooked taste to them didn't they? They did yeah. The meatballs they were quite dense but they were also quite flavorful which was good. They were very meaty. Very meaty yeah. The lamb was just extremely tender it just like fell apart really when you cut it out that was really nice. And then we also got some coffee on the house which was nice good experience I think. Yeah definitely recommend it. And now we're at a park called Vigeland Sculpture Park and all the sculptures here have been made by one artist a guy called Gustav Vigeland and it's actually the biggest collection in the world of sculptures by just one artist. Now we're going to head back into the centre of Oslo and we're going to go and see what we can get for dinner. Now our final stop on the Oslo food tour was to Freddy Frego to get a burrito. This was the second or third highest rated place on TripAdvisor for cheap eats. We've already done the other two, so let's give it a try. That's quite good. I'm a big fan of burritos, so this was an easy way to please me, we've both got the vegetarian one, which is a uh, roasted sweet potatoes with rice, beans, peppers, salsa, cheese, sour cream. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. Good burrito. So those were four of the best rated cheap eats in Oslo. And by cheap, we mean you're going to be paying around £10-ish for a takeout meal and like up to £20 for a sit-down meal. So it's not going to be super cheap like it can be in other countries, but for Oslo this is kind of what's considered cheap. But anyway, now we are leaving Oslo and we're going to go and explore more of Norway, so we'll see you there.